Hey, everybody. So I was trying to uh, see if I can get, you know, there's like a cover photo for, for each recording. Figure maybe I'll try to like time it so I'm making a weird face. And so that's what you see when you, when you first look at the video. I don't know if it, I don't know when it takes the screenshot for the, the cover photo. <clears throat> so we'll see. I tried, tried it there. This is going to be the third and final <clears throat> installment of our photosynthesis notes. Um, I think it's appropriate maybe that I change the background a little bit just to make a little more, more photosynthesis related. I don't know, maybe something like this. Oh, that's fall background. There we go. Well, again, in, in fear that it might make things a little glitchy, I'm going to go ahead and uh, <clears throat> not do that. But it's fun to play with, so there you go. Anyway, guys, uh, I'm going to get back to our notes so we can wrap this up. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's freezing in the room. This I'm, I'm videoing this uh, Tuesday the 3rd. Well, day before I'm going to sign it to you guys. Um, it's, it's so cold. I think they shut the heat off in the whole building since y'all weren't here. <clears throat> so that's nice, right? Um, <laughs> anyway. So this is where we left off. We had just gotten done going through the uh, light reactions, the details of the light reactions, as well as mentioning the Calvin cycle a.k.a. the dark reactions. <clears throat> so this is going to be annoying for both of us. <clears throat> I'll try not to let it, let it get in the way here. Um, but we saw that chemiosmosis occurs during the light reactions, and, and we generate ATP virtually the same way we did in cellular respiration. Um, we, we had electron transport chains. We had proton pumps. We had ATP synthase. And so uh, chemiosmosis evolved, we could say, first in cellular respiration. <clears throat> and then once, <laughs> excuse me, once photosynthesis evolved, then it found a function in, in that process as well. So I always thought that was, that was kind of cool. Um, again, in, in respiration, we pump the H pluses into the intermembrane space let them diffuse back toward the matrix, whereas in photosynthesis, we pump them out of the thylakoid, excuse me, we pump them into the thylakoid and allow them to diffuse back out into the stroma. The way I always remember it is, in both cases, we're pumping the protons away from the cycle, uh, either the Krebs cycle or the Calvin cycle, and then we let them diffuse back toward the cycle. Okay, so since the Calvin cycle happens out in the stroma, we pump the H pluses into the thylakoid and let them diffuse back out into the stroma. And in the mitochondrion, we pump them out of the matrix and let them diffuse back in. It's kind of a nice way to remember uh, which is which. But again, we're talking about an electron transport chain accumulating H pluses on one side of the membrane, letting them diffuse back in through ATP synthase making a bunch of ATP. So ATP and NADPH are your chemical energy molecules that are made during the light reactions. They power the Calvin cycle reactions out in the stroma, and that, of course, is where you make your glucose and other organic molecules. So I like this diagram here. Um, here's a photosystem, cluster of pigment molecules. You can see a photon of light excites an electron, woohoo, hits that primary electron acceptor, goes down an electron transport chain, causing H pluses to get pumped into the thylakoid space. Those electrons that are lost are replaced by the splitting of water, photolysis. <clears throat> and meanwhile, here, photosystem one's electrons are getting excited by a photon of light, woohoo to a second primary electron acceptor. These electrons go down another electron transport chain and wind up forming NADPH. Back here, photosystem two, remember we pump those protons in, they diffuse back out into the stroma through ATP synthase, making ATP. 
Now, both of these chemical energy molecules are going to be used to power the reactions of the Calvin cycle. So this all here is steps one and two. Capture sunlight energy, woo -hoo, woo -hoo. convert it to chemical energy, ATP and NADPH. Step three, use the chemical energy to power the Calvin cycle reactions to make glucose. <clears throat> All right, so just read over these notes. Carbon fixation. Don't forget here we're talking Calvin cycle. We're incorporating carbon from carbon dioxide into organic molecules. We call that carbon fixation. And there's an enzyme called Rubisco that is the first step of the Calvin cycle where we do this. So again, you don't have to memorize all these steps. And even though my freshman year college, I sure did, every step, every intermediate, every enzyme. Not fun, but it is what it was. Uh, so anyway, here's CO2 entering the Calvin cycle. Here's the enzyme Rubisco incorporating it into this molecule. You can see that ATP is used here, NADPH is used here. Down at the bottom here, we're making our glucose and organic compounds. And just like the Krebs cycle, Right? The starting material is the ending material as you go around the cycle. And then more CO2 is brought in and Rubisco does its thing. <clears throat> now, dehydration is a major problem for plants because they can't lean over and drink. Even if they're right next to a pond, they rely on rain getting into the soil, into the roots, up the stem, and so forth. Dehydration is a big deal, and plants lose a considerable amount of water vapor out of their stomata, those openings under the leaf that are used for gas exchange. So on hot, dry days, plants will tend to close their stomata to limit water loss, but then that limits the CO2 that comes in, and it also causes oxygen to build up inside the leaves. So this leads to a bad situation known as photorespiration. So normal photosynthesis is called C3, photosynthesis. This is the first molecule that's formed um, is, is a three carbon molecule. <clears throat> Photorespiration, instead of Rubisco adding CO2, like it normally does, it actually adds oxygen. And so you wind up not making sugar or ATP through photorespiration. So it's something plants will do, C3 plants will do, to limit water loss, but now you're also limiting your ATP and food production. So photorespiration is a bad thing. So plants that have evolved in hot, dry climates um, have, of course, evolved modifications to typical photosynthesis. So one example would be C4 plants that use C4 photosynthesis instead of forming a three carbon molecule at the beginning of the Calvin cycle, they form a four carbon molecule. And so there's a different enzyme than Rubisco called PEP carboxylase, and it has a higher affinity for CO2. It kind of takes in CO2 uh, much, much better, much more efficiently, even when CO2 is in very low levels, like when the stomata are closed during the day. And so it makes a four carbon molecule that it it, and this happens in the surface mesophyll cells of the leaf. It shuttles this four carbon molecule into the bundle sheet cells, which are deeper in the leaf, and the CO2 is then given off and you make your glucose. The CO2 is trapped in the bundle sheet cell. So I kind of like this diagram to explain it. Here's CO2 coming in, not Rubisco, but PEP carboxylase incorporates or fixes the carbon into oxaloacetate, a four carbon molecule. So this is in the mesophyll cell here, which is along the surface of the cell, or of the leaf, sorry. Deeper are the bundle sheet cells. So here's the bundle sheet cell. And there's a thing called the malate shuttle that this four carbon molecule comes into the bundle sheet cell, gives up the CO2, which is now trapped in there, and it participates in the Calvin cycle to make sugar. So with C4, the modification is where the Calvin cycle happens. Normally it happens in the mesophyll cells. C4 photosynthetic plants, it shuttles the CO2 into a bundle sheet cell. So where the Calvin cycle happens is different. Another modification 
uh, that plants have evolved is CAM, crassulation acid metabolism, we call them CAM plants. And instead of the location of the Calvin cycle being different, what CAM plants do is they close their stomata during the day. They say, the heck with it, we're not gonna lose water vapor. Um, and they open the stomata at night when it's cooler and they're not gonna lose as much water. So what happens here, if you look on the right, is at night, CO2 is brought in and fixed into organic acids. And then during the day, those acids release the CO2, offers it up for the Calvin cycle, cycle to make sugar. So in C4 photosynthesis, the location of the Calvin cycle is different. The location of where carbon is fixed and enters the Calvin cycle. Cam plants, it's a timing that, thing that's different. So the stomata are closed during the day, open at night, CO2 is brought in and trapped at night, and then given up during the day when the energy is available, the sunlight energy is available, to make your ATP and your NADPH. All right, so again, photosynthesis, this energy from sunlight is being stored as chemical energy in organic compounds. Plants store their excess sugar as starch. So when we eat starchy food, we're eating lots and lots of glucose that was made from photosynthesis. And of course, releasing oxygen in the atmosphere is important for lots of living things. So it's all about the balance, the yin and the yang. Remember how respiration and photosynthesis are related. So here's just a couple nice summarizing diagrams. You know, the light reactions here, making NADPH and ATP. Alvin cycle reactions using that chemical energy to make glucose for the cell. And then here's just another little reminder diagram of the light reactions, photosystem two, making ATP through chemiosmosis, photosystem one, making an ADPH. All right. So we're gonna go over a diagram that I've made, sort of like we did for cellular respiration. I'd like you guys to recreate it. Um, again, you can add notes to it. It's something that you may want to keep even during your college years. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. And thank you for watching.